All right, guys, Adam with Arrowworks here. We get a lot of questions about Iris firmware updates, upgrades, and what mission planner software do we typically use. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick tutorial here on how to install the software, what screens you'll be using uh, most commonly, and then some uh, little tips and tricks on how to use the software. So first, we, we're going to start off here assuming that you don't have any software installed. We're at the 3D Robotics website. We're going to go ahead and click on the software link and it's going to actually open up here to a guy using a mission planner at the top. We're going to roll down a little bit. It's going to talk about some of the firmware and the different aircraft they sell and uh, make. And then we're going to start to see the software packages. So we have APM Planner. This is typically a Mac-based program, Linux uh, or PC. Mission Planner. And then we get into the tablet-driven applications like Droid Planner and Android Pilot. We're going to come back up here to Mission Planner. This is really the most full-featured uh, and really the original software that's been used since the beginning of the APM series of autopilots. This is the one we typically use. It is only PC based, but uh, we find that uh, you get the most out of this software. So go ahead and click on any of the, any of the links here for the mission planner. Um, you can go down to the bottom, uh, excuse me, up to the top here and go to downloads and then mission planner. And then you can click on this download link right here. We're not going to go into how to install software. Hopefully you guys know how to do that. If you have any issues with drivers not working, there's all kinds of information on the uh, community and the forums here to help you do that. But what you want to do is install Mission Planner, and it's got this little MP and the wing icon. And once you get that installed, we'll come back and pick it up from there. All right, the first thing I want to go over is the uh, loading param files for the iris and how you can change some of those settings to your liking. This is something that a few people have messed up inadvertently and it's caused other issues uh, with the iris and with their iris radio. So first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and plug in. You're going to notice up here at the top that there's only one thing shown. It's COM port 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my telemetry radio via the USB cable, the long USB, uh, USB cable. And your computer typically will make a tone if you're at Windows 7 or higher. We're going to hit the drop down again now, and you notice now there's a COM port 15. This may be different on your computer. It could be 20, 25, it could be anything. But you'll typically see a new COM port show up on there, and that's the one you want to select. You can leave it at 57.6. It, it works fine if you're plugged directly in. We're going to go ahead and hit connect. And you'll know that you're connecting because after a few seconds you will see the params being loaded into the uh, PC. Okay, the other way you can verify is either by moving the iris no around or changing your modes no and indicating, no uh, watching what's indicated auto, here. No and we change. see that that's auto. all happening no change as stay. it should. No change. So, what do we do with param fire, files? We're going to go to the configuration tab, which is this one with the wrench on it. And you're going to notice here there's a few things listed. We have standard params, and then we don't have anything after that except for planner. Uh, so what you want to do, if you don't see other menu items here, you want to click on standard params and advanced menu view. And when you do that, you're going to see you get a full list here. Now we can start at the top. This basically walks you through you know, what modes you're currently in. So if you wanted to change your mode 1 from stabilize, let's say in my case, to something like the default alt hold, you would do that right here. And that was that's all you'd have to do and click save and it would be done. In my case, my case I like stabilize mode for mode one, mode two is mode loiter, auto. mode three is auto, and then we have the combination of that switch being down or up mode to and the auto. RTL mode or the auto. land. Mode to land. So those are mode how you change your auto. modes. Mode so, uh, simple land. mode and super simple, uh, Information on those can be found on the website, but that's basically a 3D robotics version of the IOC or the Intelligent Orientation Control. So you can enable, uh, depending on which mode you're in, if you want it to be in either one of those, and there'll be more information on the Arducopter website about that. Geofence, again, um, we can have all these different things set. I typically have mine disabled, but if you enable it, you can then have um, what the actions are upon hitting that fence, your altitude, your radius, your return to uh, home altitude, and all that can be set here. We can also set that in a bunch of other places. And one of them is the full parameter list, and this is where I like to go. 
So this is where the 3D Robotics products really outshine anything else on the market in, in this price range. And that you can see here, uh, I clicked on the blue box there. I'm just going to use my up and down arrows. And every one of these parameters that you see here is something that you could actually tweak on an iris. And for very different reasons, and I'm not saying you should, and we haven't even made it halfway through the list. So you can see there's hundreds and hundreds of different things that we can change in there. So what should they be set out of the box? Or what if I screw them up and how do I get back to my stock iris param file? You'll notice over here on the right, we have a few green buttons followed by a drop down list and then load and then reset the default. For us, we're going to select the drop down arrow and you're gonna see one here that says 3DR iris plus param. You're going to click on that and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna load it. So we wanna see what's different between what we have in our copter right now and what's in the default file. So I'm gonna hit load params and it's gonna give me a little safety note. Are you sure you wanna load the 20, you know, 10, 23, 20, 3D Iris Plus? I'm gonna say yes. Then you're gonna get a compare box. Now these are values that I have set here and this is what the new value would be changed to if I decided to go with the de default param file. So in my case, I have a value of zero, which is off and the offense enable. The new value out of the box is one. If I wanna use it, I keep that checked. If I don't wanna use it, I uncheck it. Fence type, I have that disabled. Three is the default. I'm gonna leave it unchecked. And then flight mode one for me is loiter. Their default is the alt hold. I'm gonna leave that unchecked. So this is a quick compare uh, screen. So if there was hundreds of different parameters that you had changed, you would see the difference between what you currently have and what the new value will be when you write these params. So I actually unchecked everything. And you could check this box, which is check all or uncheck all, and then you can hit continue. Now anytime you change a param file, so if we're in here and we go down to, let's say, uh, let me find one here. Okay, waypoint nav speed. This is the point at which this setting determines how fast your iris is going to travel between waypoints. And if you're not sure what these are, it gives you a nice description here. It defines a speed in centimeters a second, which this, the aircraft will attempt to maintain horizontally during a waypoint mission. Now it gives you a range, zero to 2,000. Default is 650. If I decide that I want my iris to move a little quicker between waypoints, and I change that to say 750, as soon as I move off that line, you're gonna see that there's a now a green box indicated here. And that's because this one parameter is different from what I have loaded right here. And it's gonna stay different until I actually click the right params button. So nothing writes or changes to the iris until you click write params. Now if you decided, hey, I've really got a sweet setup here, I've got all these settings just right, for the camera I have on there or the payload or some other device you have mounted to it and you want to share that with a friend, you can save that param file. So you can click the save button and essentially give it whatever you want. Uh, Adam's cool iris. And you can share that param with a, with a friend and then you could email it to them and they could load that file just by clicking the load button. So that's what the load and the save is. Write params is basically saying write what I just changed, which if I did in this case, it would change the 750 or 650 to 750. If I say refresh params, it's gonna see, it's gonna pull the iris to see what's currently in there. So I'm gonna go refresh. <clears throat> and it says, make sure you don't do this in the air, of course. And it's gonna grab them real quick and we should see this go back to what it was. And it may or may not. We'll see here. Oh, it jumped back. So let's go down here to the, the waypoint nav speed right there. And there it is, 650. Went back to 650. Because I didn't write it. I just refreshed and I pulled what's currently out there. So that's one thing you can do. If you want to tinker around with some of these, you can. Just be aware that keep it within the range that's listed here. And, and look at the description. Now, why do they give you all these parameters? Well, the Pixhawk isn't only in an Iris. It's also in DJI products. It's in custom-built aircraft. It's in all kinds of different robotic 
vehicles from ground to boat to air, you know, aircraft, fixed wing, rotorcraft, traditional helicopters. So there's reasons that other people may want to change some of these. But just know that if you get in here and get crazy and get screwed up, you can simply come down here, hit the Iris Plus param, load the param, verify that you're loading the correct one, and then again, compare what's different between what you currently have loaded and what they want to change it to and, and, and just decide if that's what you want to do. If you want to keep it the way it is, you can uncheck them and say continue and you're back to the list here. So that's a quick overview of parameters. You can go into a lot more detail on what individually these are, more detail than what's described here on the description, but this is what makes a PixHawk controller so awesome and the fact that it has a lot of parameters and a lot of things that you can customize to fit any aircraft.